I'm just curious. I'm reading these comments and I have so many questions. What has everyone got against rap? It's really just one one guy. Oh, it's just, okay. This is crazy, Joe. Uh, oh no, no, no! I'm talking about the chat, dude. Oh, why? Who's who else is complaining? They're like, oh, there was a shooting last time. There was a rap group in town. Listen, oh. listen. Okay, there's a bad rep around a lot of like hip hop and rap, but you know what? Hip hop is what what has made this country to a point. You know what I mean? You go out to New York, it's wicked popular there because that's that's that was people's getaways. You know mm -hmm. from. In the Bronx, man, when they were doing the construction out there in what was it, 1990s, around there? Was it 1990s or 1990s or 1980s? They were doing some construction out there. They tore up a lot of homes, and that was a lot of people's getaways. Yeah. I understand there is a bad rep, but you know what it is? You know what a lot of, a lot of it is? It's where we live, you know? You've got these people that want to be cool, and, you know, they want to they wanna do stupid stuff, and they want to try yeah. to act cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of these rappers, you know, they're really down to earth people. Oh yeah. I I understand there's a stigma around it, but you know if there was such a bad stigma, they wouldn't have named November hip hop like a hip hop heritage month. Oh. Which they just recently did, like yesterday, yeah. I think it was. Oh, I didn't know about that. You know what I mean? It just yeah. it, it it irks me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's like uh like like Crazy Joe talks about, well, actually here, Eric just posted in the chat room, Eric Pilter, referring to Crazy Joe. He did two videos on how all rappers are criminals and horrible human beings. Yep. Uh, this started because Jay-Z is going to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yes. And now, will I say, will I say there's a lot of rappers out there who I can't respect because of what they what they did while they were rappers, you know? Sure. I understand maybe, you know, when you're... When you're still on the come up, you know, trying to make a few dollars, I get that. I understand that. It's not right. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you go into that fight or flight mode, okay? So it, it it's that survival instinct they've had. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I can understand that. I can understand people getting a bad rep from what happened to, like, Tupac and stuff like that or what happened at in Manchester a few months ago with that local tour, with that, lo with that touring artist. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. But not every rapper is like that. Oh, of course. Well, I always say, too, uh, people who don't understand or they they condemn, some people will, you know, it's kind of a boomer thing, I guess. Some people will condemn hip-hop as, you know, being all like, they talk about it like it's all gangster rap and it's all this violent stuff. And it's like, that would be like saying that all rock music is uh, satanic death metal. You know, it, it's there's many different kinds of hip-hop, just like there's many mm -hmm. different kinds of rock mm -hmm. music. But so. you don't see them coming up coming at metal like that well but there are people who do there, there are there, there are, are people who have over and you're you know you don't you don't remember because i mean you're you're so young but uh like when i was a kid you know and they probably still happen in the south it was a big thing record burnings yeah they would have these uh record burning parties outside where i remember when i was a kid seeing one it was on mtv there was an mtv news story about it and uh um, back when mtv was actually mtv yeah yeah and this uh, this this uh, preacher, he's running this record burning ceremony, mm -hmm. and one of the records he threw into the fire was REO Speedwagon, <laughs> and it was so weird. And it was like REO Speedwagon, and, but the um, but the title of the album it was it was kind of a uh, play on words. It was High in Fidelity. It was mm -hmm. like high fi but high oh. infidelity. So the preacher's like, we don't want infidelity, we want fidelity. And he throws the record into the fire, and it's like, but, you know, Kiss, my you know, my favorite band, Kiss, they they had to deal with a lot of that, like, um, especially in the South, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people claiming that it was an acronym for Knights and Satan's yep. Service and things like that, you know. And not... I will say it's all about where you live, too, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's all about where you live. You go out to New York, you won't hear you won't hear a single thing about this. Right. You know? Right. We wouldn't be talking about this. We'd be talking about how it's the culture. You get out into some spots in Boston, we'd be talking about where it's it's the culture. Lowell, Cambridge, mm -hmm. you know. Lawrence. Yeah. You'd be talking about how it's the culture down there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like it's not rap that's bad. It's not rap that's not music. It's some of the people that some of the artists and musicians in there. They're giving it a bad name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a few bad apples make the bunch. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're always gonna have for lack of for lack of better yeah, wording. You're always gonna have that. Um, but um, yeah. And but, there was a there was a question in there too. Is rap really music? 
I yeah. mean, Tom, I'll, let me tell you. Tom is not a fan. <laughs> yeah. I, not many people are. I mean, you guys are, it, it's, you guys are different people. I understand that. Mm -hmm. I get that. I respect that. Respect my opinion too. But no, is rap really music? Is it produced in a studio? Is it produced like, you know, rock would be? Country music? Pop music? Yeah. It's music. Of course. It's produced the same way. Actually, uh, early rap was uh, kind of, well, you know, th then there was rap rock in the 90s and into the 2000s. That's but, back, too. But yeah, somewhat. But early early rap, if you listen to early rap, like Run DMC, there was a lot of guitars in it. You uh -huh. know, like Rockbox. Yeah. Box. I don't and know there you... still is. Yeah. Hey, Matt, it's Eric from Cedar Rapids. I just wanted to chime in on the rap conversation here. Please yes. do. Uh, yes. I'm a huge fan of rap myself. Uh, I listed my favorite groups in the chat or sure artists, groups. and you know the whole. How do I want to say this? The whole gangsta mentality has been diminished. Like even movie wise, you have movies like Juice, Boys in the Hood, Menace to Society. Uh, deep cover that have been just royally diminished as being violent and overdone. And it's like, no, this is, this is their life. Mm -hmm, this is mm -hmm. what they live in these areas. Mm -hmm. And I feel that rap in general has become a victim of that as well, where people try to say, Oh, it's glorifying, it's glorifying violence and drugs and, no, it's not. It's a way to tell a story, keep it authentic, and have a beat to it. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the early days of music. So rap is music, and anyone in, you know, I, I have a huge issue when people just rally against a certain type of music. Yeah. Because it's wrong, because what you want with music is, does it make someone feel good? Right. Does it put does it help someone's mindset? Yeah, exactly. You know, I've always uh, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't judge anything when it comes to music. I mean, I, I'm so I mean, I agree with what you're saying, Eric. I'm I'm at such a point with it where I don't even I'm very careful. You know how like not just about rap, but about any genre of music. Someone if someone doesn't like something, a particular band or a or rapper or whoever, they'll say, Oh, that sucks, you know, I don't mm -hmm. I don't see anything in them or whatever. I'm very careful not to do that. I always say, Well, I don't like that. I don't like that band or I don't like that rapper or I don't like whatever it is. It doesn't suit my taste, but but people get into this weird thing where people are very judgmental when it comes to music. Even people who Tend, yeah. to, tend not to be judgmental in other ways. When it comes to music, they're very, people are just very judgmental. And I'm sensitive to that, too, because, again, mm -hmm. growing up a Kiss fan, you know, there's a lot of music snobs out there who turn yep. their noses up at Kiss yep. because they can't get past the makeup and the costumes. And, um, you know, and, and people, are, people are very judgmental in general, I think, about music, but especially when it comes mm -hmm. to hip-hop. You know, people have, have uh, their, you know, these negative stereotypes about yeah. what it's and all about. I think, oh. go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Christian, you go ahead. Okay, so what I was going to say is, I think, you know, I, I sort of, when I was younger, kind of had the same mindset that people have now about rap recently. But, like, when you dig into it, you do your research, you read up on it, and you meet people, yo, it, your, your view changes on it, you know what I mean? The stereotype changes, the stereotype goes away, that these are just people. And, yeah, there are... There is songs out there that do talk about, you know, doing the the illegal stuff, bad stuff, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it like like Eric said, it's telling a story. Yeah. Most of the time. There it's is a, a few part out of there. their life. Yeah, exactly. It's what they have lived in most cases. Right. I have a question for you because you know, you're 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 the history buff out here. Um, did you get what I was going towards when I said the Brooklyn thing? Um if I had to guess on Brooklyn, I would say like Brooklyn is where Biggie came from. True. I mean, yeah, Brooklyn true, yep. is like w one of the epicenters of rap. You have LL Cool J that came from Brooklyn. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying. There's a Dip lot. Set, I, think, I think maybe I'm wrong. You'd have to correct me on this, Christian. But I think Def Jam kind of started in Brooklyn. Yeah, they really did, honestly. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I mean, you, my whole thing is this is growing up. I listened to rap and Mm -hmm. I had white people and African Americans alike. Tell me you can't listen to that because you're white. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, dude. It's crazy. The stereotypes oh, yeah. are crazy, man. It, like growing up as a, a 12, 13, 14 year old boy, you're sitting there and you're like, oh, well, maybe it's wrong. Me, I didn't mm-hmm. because I grew up with my mom and a very headstrong aunt who basically said, forget them, do what you want. You know, what's crazy is too recently I've noticed, well, like when, for example, to use him as an example, when we had Tony V on, you didn't see them trashing rap like this. You know what I mean? Right, right. But when we get to the nitty gritty hardcore like rap, you know, people who grew up in the hood hood, like that's when people start trashing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's even getting to the point where we try to diminish rap and African-American stories that two, three years ago, uh, I'm try- a cable network had gotten the rights to air Roots, the mini series, the original mini series, and there were actual cries from parents that they needed to edit some of the content out of it or air it later. Ugh. Like not, it's like, yes, is it hard to watch? Oh, absolutely. You're not gonna. I've never heard someone say, I want to binge watch Roots. <laughs> right, right. <No. laughs> um, it is a very difficult watch, even with it being over 40 years old, I think, 77. I'm horrible at math. I am but too. But it's this idea that we have to diminish mm-hmm. the story to make it acceptable. Right. And that is wrong, entirely wrong. Well, there is no more poignant song in my opinion, then Brenda's got a baby by Tupac. Uh-huh. Yeah. If you listen to that song and ignore the fact that it's done, ignore any preconceived biases, you're like, you're kind of shook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or uh, his wonder why they call you can't say it on FM radio, but that's another story that you're like, man, mm. it, it's a difficult listen Mm-hmm. And we, in a lot of times, people that don't understand it or don't get it or don't want to confront it or it makes them uncomfortable, want to diminish it and bash it and have it removed. Mm-hmm. And it's wrong. And we need to we need to listen to these stories. We need to watch these stories because then we gain a greater understanding. Mm-hmm. Well, also, and I, uh, I, I was just going to say too, you know, really good art should, uh, and obviously music is art, you know, it should challenge you, you know? A- absolutely. Absolutely. You, it just, it's mind boggling to me. Like I have watched, I'm a big fan of the film Menace to Society, not because it's a gangster film and, oh, snap, look at that shooting. It's because it tells a tale of mm-hmm. what these inner cities are really like. Mm-hmm. It's not sugarcoated. It is not, it isn't, you know, oh, we got to tone this down. No, it's in your face. It's this is what it is. And I have seen people tell that have come over to my place to watch it and they say, I can't watch this anymore. Please turn it off. Yeah. And and I'm like, why can't you watch it anymore? And they're like, it's just uncomfortable to watch. It's uncomfortable for you to watch. It's what they live. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you, and we, you see, and it, I'm you see the it in here. You see it in Manchester. They dude. say that about rap too. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> why? Well, there's cursing. That's their culture. Well, it's violence. That's what they live. It's drug dealing. That's what they do. That's what they do. And whether you agree mm-hmm. with it or not, that is their life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Listen, some of these people just got to go back and watch Eight Mile again. That's that. <laughs> some of these people just got to go back and watch you know, Eight Mile. I, to bash any film, I, I was not a fan of Eight Mile. I wasn't either, but it was the first movie I could think of. To be honest, I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I like that. In that movie, what, <laughs> who was it? 50 Cent was in too. I don't think that will end up on Eric's classic film review uh, anytime soon. Come on, man. Just kidding. Uh, uh, no, 8 Mile is not. But I will say this. I, am, I believe in planning ahead. I do have what I think is an amazing slate for Black History Month do in the February. Outsiders. Do the Outsiders. We are... I'm requesting we the are Outsiders. definitely going to cover a lot of the films I've mentioned in this conversation because I think it's oh, yeah. very important for these films to be viewed and the music to be heard and the stories to not just be listened to but sunk in and resonated mm-hmm. with people. Mm-hmm. Because then we gain an understanding. And while we may not agree with Antifa or ba- Black Lives Matter, we can see the precipice of why it's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's and a mature way to approach see it. See what the issue is. I don't agree with the, a lot of the things Black Lives Matter has done, but I do understand the root issues mm-hmm. at hand here. Mm-hmm. And I just think there's a better way we can discuss it yeah. and talk about it. Well, very. It's just multiple heads have to come together. Right, right. Which is uh, which is always a challenge. Well, Eric, uh, I appreciate the call. We're actually. Uh, we're, Thank you. We're yeah, absolutely. Thank you because yeah. you you helped me get the words out that I couldn't get out because I couldn't there, think of the words to you know. There you yeah, go. Yeah. That. Well, you know, Christian, I was listening to you, and I, you know, I'm not. I would never dog you or anything, but when you're passionate about something. It is very hard to get those words out. And I can tell you're passionate about it. You're passionate about your music. You're passionate about your art. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to say something and hopefully it clicks. So I hope it did with some people. And maybe there's a pause in regards to bashing these forms of art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Music is art. It's a. And dude, yep. like like you said, feeling passionate about it. Music is what saved me, dude. Music is what has made me me since I was fourteen. Mm-hmm. Since I sat behind a computer making, me, me, taking a class on music production to now DJing in front of three hundred, four hundred, five hundred people, bro. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's been times it has literally saved me. <laughs> well, uh, well, art saves. It does. It does. 